625 gram quad hero eight what does it look like check it out Basically, what happened was I was tired. I needed the footage of the Hero 8. I mean, I'm just, I'm sorry, but I can't use the session anymore at this point. The best possible footage from a session after it's been edited and everything doesn't even look as good as just the stock flat uh, Hero 8 footage, in my opinion. So I had to get the Hero 8 on here. And when I did, I was at looking at 700 something plus grams. And that's when I came with this idea to take the Hero 8 battery out. So this might literally seem insane. This is the only camera I have. So to show you how it's plugged in to the quadcopter with the USB cable, boom. You can see the little silver thing and that's the USB plug that goes into the GoPro. That's what it looks like, okay? So I'm basically making this video in prequel to my complete tuning video that I'm doing, which is gonna be cross uh, firmware. So beta flight, flight one, kiss, everything. It's just gonna be kind of like a theory video on how to get a quad to fly, how you want it to fly all the time. And the conclusion that I kind of came to is that the most important thing is the weight of the quad uh, matching what you're doing. So I had, when I switched to this Apex, it was about like 35 grams heavier than my previous frame and you know throwing a big mount on there which was like 20 grams heavier than my last mount i was looking at 710 715 grams and that's just way too much for the type of flying that that i'm doing um i just didn't like it especially for the 2306s and the type of props that i like to use and the kind of throttle curve that i like um it was i wasn't having it so i had to drop the weight the first thing i did was really simple things like you know using aluminum screws for the standoffs here here and that saved me like eight grams okay it wasn't enough i went to the toa turbines from the toas that saved me like 17 grams needed to keep going started cutting the battery pads and stuff like that uh <laughs> to save weight here and there the hero 8 mount was crazy heavy it was like 35 grams ultimately i went with this one which is 10 grams then i used this instead of the little gopro thing which saves me like another 10 grams something like that so after everything was done i was looking at like seven i mean six sixty six seventy grams and it was okay it was that's like most of my videos that i fly is around that weight but i had to keep pushing it and that's when i came with this idea to take the hero 8 battery out and i installed this little um usb cable i guess to get rid of the hero 8 battery boom and that saved me 40 grams that's basically all the weight that I had gained from switching to the Apex. And if you wanna do it, all you really need is the, I use the iFlight BC. I'll put a picture of it, I strapped it down right here. It's about this big. Um, you need something that is gonna give you at least one and a half, two amps to make sure the GoPro doesn't cut out while recording. And this one's a good one. For 4S, it gives you, I think, like three amps. For 6S, it gives you one and a half. So I've had no issues with it. You wanna give it a little bit of slack so that that way, you know, if your GoPro like folds in a crash or something, you won't rip it out. You wanna use some heat shrink here. Make sure you don't short, cause that's no fun. Um, yeah, and that's it. You just get one of these little TBS, I should probably mention this. One of these TBS wire things, it's called a, USB type C power cable from TBS. It's just a ground and a power and the type C port plugs into the GoPro and you're good to go. So this was a kind of test. I've had it like this for a few weeks on this quad. I've crashed a few times, no issues with the GoPro. The GoPro has been banged up, but it hasn't like creased in where the battery cavity is or anything that I thought might happen. It isn't really a pain at all to have a uh, 
the GoPro be plugged into the battery. I thought maybe that would be annoying, but I pretty I generally turn off the GoPro when I unplug anyway. You just have to remember to turn it off, stop recording before you unplug, otherwise you might lose your footage. And I'm filming with it now with a battery, so it's not like the little naked GoPro stuff where you know, you just can never use the GoPro again without the quad. So I love it. I think that this is how I'm gonna do the rest of my quads. I'm gonna swap them up. I got the parts right here. I'll put all the pieces that you need to do this in the description if you wanna check it out. And now the quad is at a really, really manageable weight. So some of the oscillations that I was having on punch outs, not really on punch outs, but kind of like in the same area where you would get prop wash. Kind of hard to explain. That'll be in the tuning video. That got fixed. Um, the quad feels a lot better. The sticks feel a lot better. I'm now switched to the X9D. The short story of this is I wish I would have done it a long time ago. It's an excellent radio. And I think that everyone who switched away from this is did themselves a disservice basically because it the gimbals feel so good. Like I'm coming from the QX7. The gimbals are a little bit smaller and I think that this is a good upgrade from the QX7 once you kind of, because uh, I guess there becomes a point where big gimbals are, they're good for you when you're starting. And then I feel like as you progress, they kind of hold you back from getting the kind of precision that you need because you got to make bigger movements and the bigger the movement, the easier it is to make a mistake. Basically, I don't know. Just my opinion. So I'm on the X9D, I am on this lightweight cinematic rig and basically my tuning video is gonna be showing you how to tune this thing and how I go about getting as little prop wash as possible and the best flight characteristics and stick feel. So an upgrade on the Toa turbines, these are still the original four that I had when uh, I put them on. This one has a huge gash in it, still flies perfectly. Uh, no vibrations or anything. So I'm really happy with these. They are lighter than the other Toas. They perform better. They're cooler. Uh, all around a better motor. And I could get this quad lighter if I wanted to. Like, I could take out one of these battery straps. That's six grams. I could take this race wire out. That's probably another 10 grams. Um, there's so many other things that I could do. I could take these little washers out. I could take this piece out, you know, but it's just not worth it. And then you start getting into a point where I think the quad feels a little too light. I'm actually I'm actually there right now a little bit. I wouldn't mind this being like 10 grams heavier, but anything under 650 is a huge thumbs up. Now, 670 is fine too. I mean, I was flying fine there, but I just couldn't so I was being held back from doing some things at this weight i can fly like cinematic juicy if i want i can fly like crazy if i want so i can have one quad that does it all and that's kind of been my goal from the beginning i'm always looking to you know do away with the cine whoops do away with the cinematic rigs do away with the long range all that stuff and just have one quad and that's kind of where i am now i can throw a big ass battery on here and hit the road i can keep it how it is and you know, fly. So short video, I know, but this is just kind of a prequel to the tuning video that's coming. Thanks for watching guys. See you on the next one. Peace.